Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Orange Power Podcast. Good to be reunited with the one and only Kenny Gajewski. How are you, sir? They're good. You ought to be doing good. You have wrapped up the regular season, and you did so in convincing fashion. And, you know, if you want to go into postseason the right way, I'd say that's what this last weekend looked like, going into postseason the right way. I, it was a good weekend to win the series, um, to do things that we <laughs> haven't done here in a long time. But I, it, I still have a kind of a bitter sweet taste. Losing the last game sucks. You know, it, it's inter- okay, but le- all right. So let's just lift the veil, Mr. Transparency. All right. So let's start at the beginning. Uh, you started Kyra Acock. You have been telling me she's throwing better. She's throwing better. Um, there's not many people that were convinced that Kyra Acock was going to start outside of this office, or maybe your dugout. Um, tell me, tell me the process of getting to that point, and what was what was the logic going in? Well. Carrie um, and Vanessa, I think both were, they've been talking early in the week. I was actually out recruiting, so they're in there doing their thing. And um, I think they felt like that would be a good plan if I was up for it. Um, I know that Carrie likes to plan way out. Um, I don't. So (laughs) um, she talked to me when I was in Michigan recruiting, and then she talked to me on my way home, and then she talked to me on Wednesday when I was back for practice. Hey, we'll talk on to Thursday when we, when we get get down there. Um, and uh, and I knew what she wanted to talk about, but I was trying to avoid <laughs> it as long as as I could. It's hard when you have Alexi kill Boyle and you don't want to. I mean, you could want to throw her every inning. We have Ivy throwing great too, and so it's nothing against any of the other ones. But um, <clears throat> you know, they were so Carrie was so convicted in in what she wanted you know to do. Um, we wanted to get some innings early um, and then be able to have Lexi in the, the highest leveraged innings, which are always the end. And so um, it's something we've been talking about since the summer, since when we hired her, um, and, um, and we put that in, in do a play. I mean, Kyra wasn't great, um, and I think she had six walks. Um, so it was kind of ugly in that, in that regard, but she was effectively wild enough to keep them uh, at bay. And then we got the lead and we were able to bring uh, Lexi in and the plan worked great. So uh, we could literally spend two hours on this topic right here. Don't want to get too far in the weeds, but listen, as a fan of Oklahoma State, as an alum of Oklahoma State, right? I'm watching this. I'm at a 14U tournament watching my daughter with a phone doing this the whole time. And I, I went, oh, okay. And then, you know, I love Kyra, right? I mean, this kid's going to be a big part of the future of this program. Um, and I see the walk, and then I see a hit, and, I, and the bases are low. It's like, okay, how long are we going to go with this experiment? <laughs> love my boy Kenny G, but how long are we going to let this happen? You guys stuck to your guns, and it absolutely paid off. How hard was it, though, not to make that decision to go, hey, hey, Carrie, maybe it's time. It was hard. I mean, I, I I had a feeling that maybe something that Carrie would want to do. So I was, I thought about it the whole week. You know, you can let your emotions like that's the the normal thing is you let your emotions get in in the way of doing what you think is right, and your emotion your emotion tells you, well, if it doesn't work, what are people gonna say? Are you scared of them? Are you why wouldn't you pitch your 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 number one All American? Blah 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 blah. And you, we've never coached like that here. Mm-hmm. We've never prepared like that here. We've done what all we've always done, what we thought is the very best. We've ne- 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 never cared. Now let me back up a bit. As we've started to win <laughs> more and more and more, that stuff creeps into your mind more and more and more. And it's just an inherent emotion, an inherent quality. I don't care how long you've done this. You you shouldn't care about outside noise, but we still it still comes across your mind. And so um, I think it's what made the win so special for us as a staff in here, the whole staff, because we had a plan. Mm -hmm. No matter what anybody else thought, if it was good or bad, we had a plan. And that's what we're paid to do do here is is to be convicted in what we're going to do and go for it. And that's what happened. And if Coach Holder ever told you or taught you anything, 
Scared money don't make money. It doesn't make it. <laughs> scared money makes no money. <laughs> you didn't play with scared money. No. You guys win it. So, and Vanessa told us on the coaches show this week, um, and she's with an earshot, so I hope I quote her correctly. Otherwise, she may come in and cancel the whole this whole segment here. Um, she said, Carrie likes to fake it all the way through. That's, let's be honest, that's not Kenny G's forte. <laughs> uh, she gone. <laughs> and the fact that you do, <clears throat> I mean, you do think it all the way through. And you can refer to our planning and go, okay, we know this is a possibility. And if this happens, this is what we do. Sticking to that plan and doing what you did, that was already thought out. It, the possibility that Kyra could struggle was obviously on the table. And you guys knew how you were going to react to it, and it was already thought out. So you weren't having to go with the emotional side of that, right? I want to I want to clarify <laughs> Coach Fletcher's comments because she's now Coach Fletcher, um, but she's right, and I think I told you that. Like I, I avoided that for four days because I didn't want to have to think through that just quite yet. Because Carrie is so thoughtful and. Um, in what she wants, you know, to do. It sometimes drives me nuts because I want a decision, you know, like I want the decision now. So once she gets convicted, she wants the decision. She wasn't ready to make a decision on Monday or Tuesday, but she wanted to work through that. Um, and that's my impatience. That's what makes me really good and so, sometimes not so good. Um, and um, so, but it just, it feels good when you, when you let these guys do their job um, and they're young, and that's why I told I, you know, in my post game on ESPN, and um, even to our media, the the state media, I just said I'm just, I'm as proud for my staff as I am for our team because they were, they had a game plan. They convinced me that it was the right game plan, and that's what you're supposed to do is let these guys work and and, and listen to what they say. You and I have talked through a lot of difficult conversations, so I was going to bring this up anyway. But I knew it was an easy conversation because I'm not questioning. We're just trying to get answers. But you you said that in the broadcast or in post game somewhere. You go, they talked me into it. So you lifted that bell. So I knew this conversation had you know, you'd thought all the yeah. way through this thing. And basically what I heard you say is Rachel, Shy, Stacy, you know, Vanessa, all of them, you carry all of them, they complete you. <laughs> Next question, is that please. What you, Next is question, that what I please. heard? I, that was weird. I, <laughs> Next question, please. They do. I mean, they, compl they, they complete the staff. So, so you have game two. Yeah. All right. We uh, Traditional wisdom's already been thrown out, right, and starting Kyra. So, okay, here comes Lexi game two, right? It's got Ivy struggling, hurting. Yeah, not struggling, just hurting. Hurting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hurt, struggling only with the pain. Um, no, there goes there. Does it, am, I, am I looking this? Way? Yeah, oh, that's Ivy out there. Yeah. So um, again, maybe not what many people thought, but again, an incredible effort by a young lady that was supported tremendously by the offensive side of things, which we haven't even got to that side yet. Um, just a, 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 an incredible decision. Lexi didn't start game one or game two, but she ended up with two wins. Have you ever heard the term house m money? <laughs> <laughs> does house money make money? <laughs> yeah, it does. It does, actually. <laughs> no, we, um, you know, we, we felt like it'd be better for Ivy to start than have to warm up, warm up, wait, 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 warm up, wait, all that kind of stuff. So we felt like it'd be better to go there, got a lead, uh, offense did their deal, and um, that plan works. <laughs> It worked again. Yeah. Okay, so in game three, right? Uh, you're going to start Lexi, right? Because that's your that's your. Well, that's what you start. think. That's, that's what you what, think. That is certainly what I thought. But nope, I look down and it and it's Ivy again. So and there's a lot of conversation about why Ivy got the start and all of those sorts of things. You tell me why Ivy got that third game start. Because her numbers are good enough to be an All American. And she wasn't qualified yet by the number of innings pitched. She needed 4.1. And uh, Carrie and I called Ivy and her mom that Sunday morning. And we sat in the hotel and I said, I want to give you a proposal. And I don't want you to live with any regrets. I want you to hear this. Your numbers are putting you in the conversation to be an All-American. 
you cannot be an All-American unless you pitch 100 innings. The cutoff is today. You currently sit at 95.2. You need 4.1. Do you want to go for it? Or are you okay with not, not going down this road? Um, I said, I just feel like I owe that to you. And it's a family decision. This is not me talking to Ivy, not me just talking right to her mom. This is me, Carrie, Ivy, and her mom having that conversation. Um, we had multiple plans. Uh, the plan was not to show Lexi again unless we were going to have a lead late and three, three outs max. Okay. Um, that's why. And I think that's what makes this program what it is. I think that's what makes this coaching staff what it is. Um, we care about kids. We care about um, uh, we care about little, little, little things. When you, um, I don't really care about, 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 about awards, but I do. Like I don't know how to explain that. But like if I would hate for somebody to not have the opportunity um, be because of that. And she would have it easy if she didn't get hurt, and we had to hold her out. But when you're when you're good to us, and you are about the cowgirl way, and you have the guts to go out there and pitch on a national stage, um, knowing that you're hurting and knowing it would be easier to just probably rest, those are the kids I want to coach, and those kids are going to get opportunities like that, and that's why we made that call. So, games tied. I mean, obviously that explains that game's tied. Okay, well, then perhaps Lexi comes in. I, I want to bring in the fact that game three losing sucks. Those were your, your words. That's not any fun. As a fan, uh, again, as a broadcaster on ESPN+, Plus, obviously taking two out of three is such a huge step. I'm satisfied. I want to win three in a row, too. Though. I want to sweep or whatever. But... The future of what is next is way more important than anything left in Norman in Game 3, right? Game 1 and 2 solidified the goal in, in there. Is that partly why, too, you didn't come in and try to slam the door one more time with Lexi and, and, and with the game tied and go, okay, we're going to try this? We had a plan. The plan was only a lead, three outs. Like three, maybe we stretch to six. I may have been able to talk carry in into six outs, but the plan was a lead, a lead only. And and I don't don't think for one second that it, when we got tied, I did what I thought about. Here we go. Yeah. And then I was like, that's not our plan. the The plan is the the plan. The plan is to be the final eight in OKC. That's the only way you have a chance to win the final game. And continuing to show her to elite teams and elite hitters will eventually catch up. No matter how good you are, they will eventually hit you and make adjustments. So um, I'm proud um, for somebody who doesn't think through a lot of things. It's not my forte, as I was told. Um, I'm proud of myself that I thought through all of that and uh, stuck to the plan. You guys did stick to the plan. Did you like that? I did like okay, that. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I think I, we hit a nerve, um, so, <laughs> so, which is always a good thing. All right, so let's talk about uh, you a half full, half empty kind of guy. All right. You know what I am. I know what you are, but you know what? If you go back to the, the Iowa State series, right, um, if that series goes differently, you guys are set with maybe a chance to win the Big 12. Um, none of that really matters now. It's a goal, right? So why are we talking about because it? Because repping is important, <laughs> and we're repping this conversation. Just, just, I mean, where you are right now, satisfied or go, ah, man, I wish we would have gotten that one or that one. Yeah, I don't even think about it. Can't think about it. It's nothing you can do. It's a waste of time. Um, we weren't good enough to win our league. It's okay. I, I'm, I'm okay. It's, it's not the main goal. I'm sorry if that makes some of our Oklahoma State fans upset. The main goal is the main goal. It's to get to OKC, be in the final eight. That's the only way that you can win the last game. I don't care. I know there's pe people that care more about beating o OU. I don't care. I, I mean, I want to beat those guys, but I, I want to go to OKC. That's what, that's what, that's the standard. And that's what people want. Um, that's what our kids want. They would trade, they would, they would trade being swept by OU, then or go to the, the the World Series. They would go to the World Series every time. 
that is the standard. That is the gold standard. So um, look, like I, um, I don't. I'm not l- l- looking back. I mean, we lost some games. We'd like to have back. It is what it is. So has other teams. And um, uh, this, where there's more parity in this game than there's ever been. People are losing games like crazy. Um, we're doing a pretty good job, and we need to remind ourselves that. And and looking back. Um, is not going to help us, um, not one bit. It's going to waste time on what's going forward. So my glass is very helpful. <laughs> so let's talk about the moving forward, all right? Um, again, beating Oklahoma is just a luxury item, right? It, getting to Oklahoma City is is the ultimate goal, and that truly is. I know that's very much the, the goal. To win it all is the ultimate goal. So beating Oklahoma is a luxury. However, beating them two out of three years for the first time since 97 in Norman um, doing what you just did and also looking back just a shade and going, we beat Texas two out of three. The confidence level that you can beat anybody going into Oklahoma City may be at an all-time high. Not for you personally, but for maybe kids. Now, you've got young kids that, you know, they don't, they, listen, they, they seem fearless on all the time. But four out of six versus one and two, absolutely it's our year. Why not? Let's go. It would seem that way from an outsider. Help me out with your pretty glasses and tell me what it looks like inside. I mean, I think these two wins solidified to outside voices across the <laughs> country that thought we would have a down year mm-hmm. that it's not a fluke. They can coach. They can re- re- recruit. They can motivate. Um, it's – we knew all that all along. Um, but it's just the nature of how this thing works. And um, I'm really, um, we just keep doing what we're doing here. And um, it's, a, it's, it's a really good coaching staff with some really good players, better yet, better people. Um, they're not afraid of anything. Doesn't mean a whole lot if you don't get to OKC when it's all said and done. Um, now, the only thing that I can tell you that feels really good is that that Bedlam trophy will never leave this office, ever, because we'll never play Bedlam again. Even if we play, it's not, that's not what that's about. Sure. So um, that will never leave here, and um, that feels pretty damn good. Well, I got to tell you what else feels pretty good is you and I have had a conversation. Again, you know, I'm a love, right? I love this program, love this university. Um, as an alum, you and I have sat here and talked about that gap being closed and closed and it's closing and it's closing. The gap got erased. Yeah. It got erased at least for one weekend. And I, I listen, where that trophy's at, I, I'm, I'm it, mentally in here. I'm hanging on to the erasure of the of the gap. Yeah, I, I, I don't. We have to continue to beat them. Sure. To do, do sure. that, so we just continue to narrow the the gap. Um, my saying the whole time has been just keep kicking shins and they'll eventually break. It's <laughs> part of what you got to do, right? You just got to be that pest that just yeah. keeps being a pest. And we're doing that. We have their respect. I don't, I know that they don't like us. I get, get it. I mean, I don't care. Like it is what it is. Like, I, I mean, we're here to compete just like them. Um, we have just as good of kids as them. You know, their kids get a lot more stuff, a lot more deals out there. I don't, I don't care. We're not about that. We're about what's inside. We're about the memories that our kids are gonna have with each other forever. It ain't fake, it's real. It's here and that's what this is all about. And so we're, like we said, we're worrying about us, that is it. And um, you know, I'm glad that you can talk about this and if it's erased in your mind, great. That makes my whole day. As long as you're happy, (laughs) I'm complete, as you would say. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but I'm not the one who completed you. Is that staff in there? <laughs> Last thing, going back to the series. I at one point, and I lost count. Twelve two out hits. Talk about some clutch hitting. Talk about the top of your lineup and Jillian. Obviously, Carly. I, you know, Caroline. It, it goes on and on. It permeated throughout your entire lineup the the entire weekend. What a what a series offensively, and the clutch hitting was unreal. Yeah, it's uh, the the cool thing is you go and you beat them at their game. You know what I mean? Which is the power and then the pitching and all that, that kind of stuff. That's what they've really done. Uh, they played better defense than us, but even they weren't 
totally clean. Um, our d defense was atrocious. Um, I was embarrassed. I think that with the, you know when you want to you want to know something that I take out of this. We won two games against an elite team and we didn't play well. Period. Like we had some clutch hits. Okay, that's it. I mean, they didn't play well and they know that. Um, and um, I've always like previous years. I've always said we had to play perfect and hope they just played good. Um, I think that's what's cool. So that's part of that erasure that I was talking about. So let's talk about the Big 12. Um, obviously, you guys are going to face uh, Bay or BYU out of the gate. So with that being said, um, again, everybody wants to win the Big 12. Everybody wants to win every title. But this is just a step to the regional, which is really the important stuff, and the super, which is extremely important, and on Oklahoma City. How do you go about structuring your plan going into the Big 12, knowing it's not the end-all, be-all goal? Let's win the first game. I mean, we'll do whatever it takes to win the first game. We'll, we're talking about the pitching now, kind of what we want to do. I think we have a plan, but we'll see if that changes in the next couple of days. Um, but just win the first game. I mean, just, just go out there and win and uh, see what happens. And um, uh, we have, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Gordon. Um, and his staff, they can really coach. Um, they got off to a poor start and have really played much better as the season kind of wound down. Um, they beat us when we were there, um, so we'll have to play well. They have a couple of um, all-conference kids um, that we're going to have to uh, uh, fight off. And um, uh, they have a proud program uh, that's used to winning. Um, so um, we're, they won't be intimidated by the moment. I have a feeling they're going to be really excited about being first year in this league and you know, uh, uh, they're playing on the second day, not the first day. It's kind of cool. Um, and um, it'll be fun. We're going to have to play well. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, before we leave, though, how about how about the attention that one mullet that Copen had? Oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> Did, could that possibly inspire you to rethink the do? No. <laughs> not one moment. Is it not crazy how much attention and love he got? He's such a great supporter. And he's so passionate and he's so outgoing. They could have picked a better guy to put on camera. I don't think he can ever shave that mullet off. I think he, <laughs> if he shaves it off, people are going to be very upset. You know so. what's funny is he said to me, kind of like what you said, we won two games and I didn't, we didn't play that well. He said, I didn't even have it hardly brushed out and grown out right. I didn't even have a new fresh trim. This is old. So he, he didn't have his A game on. So good stuff by Copen. It's going to be fun this weekend. Uh, the Cowgirls are going to be in Oklahoma City for the Big 12 tournament. Then right back here, we'll find out more of that coming up on Sunday, where the Cowgirls are going to be and what that looks like. Congratulations on uh, an incredible weekend. Let's go get another uh, few wins along the way here. Let's do it. All right, that's going to do it for us. For Coach Kenny G, I'm Casey Kendrick. We'll see you next time on the Orange Power Podcast.